Hello everybody. Pareto principle says that 20% of your efforts yield 80% of your results. Micro theme in UPSC plays the exact same role. If you have some of the micro themes sorted out for the last one week, it becomes very important and very easy to revise those 20% of the content in the last few days and then strike the right option in the UPSC prelims examination. With that logic, we are going to start with our today's theme or the sub theme that is biodiversity. Now, if you see biodiversity across UPSC question papers, don't take five, six years. This particular theme, take the questions which have appeared from this particular theme in the last three years. You will see a wonderful pattern. Approximately, if I can say, the 19 questions which have come just from the past three years. You have a number of important subjects, history, geography, polity, environment, science and tech. Consider those all subjects and this one particular theme has given you 19 questions in the past three years. This cannot be neglected at any cost. But the issue with this particular theme is we are usually not aware of the species or the uh, characteristics and the behavioral pattern which the UPSC constantly asks. And I am giving you no guarantee that we will tell you the questions or will tell you the important species. But what I am going to tell you right now is, I am going to give you a certain set, a, a certain set of information based on which you can just go through your notes your general books related to environment. And wherever you see information, any information related to these micro themes, just give a little bit of more focus on it. And I'm 200% sure this is going to help you a lot, not just in attempting questions related to biodiversity, but questions related to environment in general, because everything is linked in a subject like environment. If you see the last three years, approximately 19 questions have appeared from the theme of biodiversity. Now, what we have done for you is we have divided it into two sub themes. This theme se do tarah ke questions usually aate hai. Ek species specific, dusra governance of biodiversities and protected areas. Now, within the, these species specific questions as well, you find three particular type of questions which appear. First is type identification. What do you mean by type identification? It would have given you a few names and it would have asked you to identify the class of animals those are. The second is habitat based question. Ki kaun sa janwar kaha paya jata hai? In the next slides, I will be giving you examples about what these micro themes exactly mean. And based on that, you can sort out your revision. Then the third part, which the UPC has been delving, delving it into more in the past one year, is the behavioral pattern. By behavioral pattern, I mean what are those peculiar characteristics of some of the major species. The second sub-theme of the biodiversity theme has been governance-oriented question. This is fairly direct one. You have two or three very important acts related to Biodiversity, be it a Wildlife Protection Act or a Biodiversity Act, the question either comes from laws and bodies which have been mentioned within those acts. Or the second type of question which comes is related to protected area networks. With this, let us have a look at the question related to this particular theme. So we start with species specific and our first micro theme was habitat. Now, if you see in 2019, 2020, and again in 2023, the questions have come in various formats with respect to the habitat of species. In 2019, it gave you the names of three marine animals and asked you to identify where they are naturally found in. In 2020, it asked you about the natural habitat of musk deer, and again, there was one more question related to Bara Singha on the same micro theme. Now, in 2023, UPSC 
asked a question related to the habitat of marsupials but made it a statement based question. Now the second kind of micro theme which we have covered is type identification. Now this is again some species of turtles are herbivores. It has given you some of the character, some of the classification of turtles or whether they are herbivores or whether fish are herbivores or mammals are her uh, herbivores. So basically the classification is based on herbivores. Now in 2020, it again asked, gave you a list of names and asked you what class of animals those are. So basically you're identifying the type of animals. Then in 2021, there were three kinds of que three questions which directly dealt with this micro theme. First, it asked you about the primary producers of oceans. Then it asked you about the filter feeder. Then it asked you about the detrivores. Now, why I'm telling you all this is particularly with respect to type identification. The questions attempt karna, it seems very difficult. And I'm telling you six out of 10 students won't be attempting this question. When you are revising right now, you might be reading what a filter feeder is. But at that usually examples ko skip kar lete hai. So what UPSC is doing is, it is not asking you directly what is filter feeder. Remember this, it's not asking you what are detrivores. It's asking you which baad mein examples mein do teen naam hai. Ab wo padhiye. So if you know even one of these names, you come one step closer to the answer. Now in 2023, it asked you again about the class of deciduous trees and it asked you a statement based question on mushrooms. Next, the third micro theme from this particular uh, theme of uh, biodiversity is the behavioral pattern of certain animals. So in 2020, it asked about the characteristics of elephant. Now, if you see some animals like elephant, lion, tiger, rhinoceros, who are very unique species and have been a lot, they are always in news. Those become very important from the perspective of prelims. So you should know a bit more than just ki ye kaha paaye jate hain aur ye kya khate hain. Next, in 2021, it asked you a question giving you a behavioral pattern of certain group of animals. Again, one more question came about uh, identifying the species that can survive without a soil. Now in 2023, again you see there are two questions. So in this particular theme, what is happening is each micro theme on an average is having more than one question every year. But the problem here is these are so specific that it becomes very difficult to attempt. So that is the tip which I would be liking to give you, especially in this last two, three days. Do not go for any new book. Read the same books, but just look at the different section while reading. For example, you are reading primary producers. Then read what are the examples that particular book has suggested. I think that will solve a lot of problems for you. Now in 2023 again, it gives you a particular characteristic and asked you to identify which of these animals does that. And there was one more question which asked you to identify the animals who are more active after sunset. Now after this we move into the second sub theme that is the governance related question. Governance related question has been divided into laws and bodies and the protected areas network. So these are the two common micro themes which is related to the governance aspect. So if you see laws and bodies, questions has come again and again on an average every year. In 2019, a question came 2020, 22 and 23. In 2019, it asked you about the wetlands and the wetlands conservation and management rules. In 2020, it moved into the Wildlife Protection Act. And it asked you about it schedule. In 2022, again, it asked you about the legalities involved in wildlife protection. So one thing which you should have jotted down by now is one uh, rules related to wetlands become very important. Wildlife Protection Act becomes very important. These 
Now, these are certain acts which you need to read in a bit of detail. Then in 2023, it asks you again about Biodiversity Management Committee. So, if you see, there's a particular pattern and there are particular acts which you need to read in a bit more detail. You can jot it down, the Wildlife Protection Act, the Biodiversity Act, the wetland rules related to wetlands and any new changes which might have appeared during the course of last one year. Now the second micro theme related to laws and governance is protected area networks. Now protect, with respect to protected area networks, if you see the kind of question, it talks about the India's desert national park. It can come directly. So you need to know some of the major national parks and all the biosphere reserves. Then again, in 2023, it asks you a question about the governance of those protected areas, which is, it asks you about community reserves. Now, if you see the last slide as well, in 2020, it asked you about tiger reserves and which one has the largest area under the critical tiger habitat. So, the governance of protected area networks, be it through tiger reserves or national parks or biosphere reserves, and what are the associated governance mechanisms, those become again very important while revising these particular sub-themes. So with that, we'll be coming to the end of this session. This Now you need to understand that this is a very broad and big theme, biodiversity. The topics which I have just mentioned you right now, just take out your environment book and go through those particular micro themes which has been mentioned during the course of this video. Thank you.